catch the Big Rich Live on the Mike Radio Show on YouTube. Tune in every Saturday and Wednesday for hot news and opinions, you dig? Like and subscribe and follow us on Twitter at BR Live on the Mic and on Facebook and Instagram at Big Rich Live on the Mic. Join the conversation and catch that fire. Big Rich here, Big Rich live on the mic back again. Sorry for the week off, but like I said, I was out of town. Actually with the Dueling Dragons, we went to Colorado Springs to a uh, Dueling Dragon boat race. And the teams took gold and silver, so uh, they did real good. We had a good time. I appreciate your patience that you all didn't just bail on me and stuff like that. I sure appreciate it. But we back again, and uh, we're gonna do a uh, a show like the format that we had before I left. We're just gonna pick a couple of topics out of all of the emails that I've gotten because the last show went up uh, Wednesday of last week, and it's Wednesday of this week. So a good seven days have passed. I have hundreds of emails and tweets and stuff like that. Reference different subjects and questions and stuff that they was asking but the first and foremost we're going to get in to this Colin Kaepernick thing um, this this quote unquote controversy I was asked what did I think about it I was asked um, as a black man how do I feel about it as a officer how do I feel about it just basically as a veteran, you know how I feel about it. So I figured I was like, you know what? Well, I'll just go ahead on tap a lap and basically um, talk about, you know, my feelings and my opinion about it. First and foremost, what I like to say is my opinion about it is, is I'm proud of them. I really am. I'm proud of anybody who is willing to put their selves, their lives, their career, their image uh, on the line for something that they believe in, okay? So, I was very impressed. He was very articulate. Um, He said that he took his time. Um, He watched the news. He spoke to a lot of people. Um, He formulated his own opinion. He just got sick and tired of it. You know, there's an old saying that, you know, sometimes you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you're just sick and tired of it. And the fact of the matter is, it wasn't like he went up above and beyond to get fame or, or attention about it. He was sitting down. Somebody saw it. They broke. They brought it up. Called them, you know, called them on it. Uh you know, asked him, you know, what was the deal, you know, was you injured, was you sick, that type of stuff right there, and, you know, he just broke it down, and he said, paraphrasing, you know, he said that he couldn't support a flag uh, of a country who, you know, has put down black and brown people, held them back, you know, for centuries. What I will say to that is nothing that he said was factually incorrect. Nothing. Nothing. He didn't pick out, you know, I've seen some some of the right wing media just go crazy, talk about he's blaming everything on white people. He did not use white people at the word white people that I saw or that I read at all as his, his entire statement. You know, then when you get to the disappointment, when you have people now starting to question his race because they say, you know, he's mixed. What the hell does that have to do with it? So that means, first of all, let let, let, let me let me break that down. Mixed. We all mixed. Don't get it twisted. We all mixed. There are no quote unquote pure whites, pure blacks, pure Hispanics pure age we're all mixed we all came remember the the, the original bones were found in the middle of africa okay so we're all mixed 
Now, some people are, I'm not going to say more mixed than others, but some people's mixture, if you will, is further back in their family tree. You feel me? So, like Colin Kaepernick, his, I want to say that his mom was white, his dad was black. I don't know. Correct me. Let me know at the bottom of the, uh, put it in the comment section if I'm wrong. But, you know, so his mixture is a lot closer. But if you dig in, you know, your family tree and go way back. I'm not talking about what they do on, I, I, I can't even remember that, that site um, that you go on that you can uh, come up with and find your your lineage, heritage.com, something like that. You need to go to the DNA place, you know, like me and my daughter did, to go back deep centuries and centuries ago, you know what I'm saying, before there was there was uh, written documentation, you know what I'm saying, when you look at your DNA and break down the lineage, and, and, and every spot to see exactly where you are, you know, in life. You'll be surprised. I think the major vast overwhelmingly major excuse me, the overwhelmingly vast majority of people will be wow, you know, when they talk about their lineage. So let, let's throw it out. But even if this was a white man, an Hispanic man, an Asian man, does that make it less true? It doesn't. The truth is the truth. The truth has no color. It has no color. So for people to sit around and try to question this man's ethnicity, you know, ethnics, ethnicity. Yeah, I, I can't even say it. I'm tongue tied today. Sorry. His race, his commitment. Really? Now, I've heard some legitimate concern when some people say, well, why are you standing up now? You know, why didn't you do it when this happened, when that happened, when this happened? Well, my response to that would be, hey, everybody gets woke in their own time. Everybody's not going to get woke at the same time. And what I mean woke is you start, you start, you take the blinders off and you start finding out for yourself if what you were taught and what you were told is actually true. And that's what the conscious community is all about. Not to be divisive, not to not to, to perpetuate separation and hatred. It is just to find out the truth. The truth has no color. The truth is full of power. And there are a lot of people in powerful positions that do not want people to know the truth. It's just basically, basically it. You know, people need to stop really trying to take stuff personal. You know, like it's a personal attack on you. Find out and figure out what the deal is. Don't allow CNN, MSNBC, and especially not Fox News, tell you what you're supposed to think. Or try to explain to you what this particular person said or do. Let me tell you something. When I used to, to watch news on a regular basis you know it just got too bad i'm talking about national news i never watch local news because it you know most of the time in local news it's the, the first two or three stories is about somebody getting murdered somebody getting shot i mean nothing positive at all nothing so i i don't watch the local news i used to watch the national news, and it used to be in the hierarchy the hierarchy was msnbc because it had the most diverse anchors you know I always say that you your organization cannot do anything in my opinion cannot do anything close to where you could if you only a niche group and what I mean by that is and this is not a white or black thing it can be a white or black thing but this stands for everything you can't have like if your company is trying to do something for the masses, why do you have all men working? Or is a female owner, you trying to do something for the masses and you have all females working for you? Well, we are not all built the same. Yeah, 
does that mean that a woman can't help a man and a man can't? No, I'm not saying that. No, 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 I'm saying that. But when you are at the table, when you are making policy, when you are making decisions, everybody of different um, ethnic background, of race, color, creed, religion, maybe with sexual orientation, should be at the table. Therefore, yeah, it'll be harder because you'll get some dissents. But then you can know that when you come out with something, when you come out with a program, when you come out with a policy, when you come out with a product, it has had in, input in it from the vast majority of people in this nation. Those are the ones that fly through the hoop. Those are the ones that go right through there, nothing but that. That's just in my, my opinion. So we get back to people questioning Collins' uh, ethnic background. Why? Does it make a difference? It, it shouldn't make a difference at all. What he said was factually correct. Now you have some people say, oh, well, I understand and I agree with his premise. I just don't agree with his method. Well, my comeback to that is, well, what method would you suppose to use? Obviously, whatever methods have been being used in the past has not changed the situation has not corrected the situation has not made the, the, the situation more fair and more broad we're not stupid you know I don't talk to stupid people the thousands of people who view my videos every week the hundreds of emails and tweets that I get tells me we open the overwhelming majority of people that converse with me that watch this video right here are not stupid you know for a fact that what Colin Captain I said take take away the way he looks close your eyes and just listen to what he's saying you know he's not factually incorrect he's not this country and I love this country those who know me I've been a police officer 23 years. I've been a veteran serving during wartime, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, for six years. And would have stayed in if they didn't want to send me and my, my uh, family somewhere in the snow. I was born and raised in New York. That's cool. I don't want to be in the snow. Okay? Just don't want to. So anyway, that, I digress. But if called, if something was to jump off legitimate, not this I, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq bullcrap. If something was to jump off and I'm able, I'm able, healthy to do, I would serve again. So I'm coming from a position of no. I'm not coming from a position where I think, well, my dad was in the military. Oh, my wife was in the military. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Even though both of them are factually true. But I'm coming from a no. I know that this country, which I love and which I will die in and die to protect, has not lived up to its creed for all people. This is basically it. This is basically it. If you are of sound mind and thought and you have an open mind, you're using your brain. You've taken the blinders off and you're not listening to a Bill O'Reilly to tell you something different or a um, Chris Matthews to tell you something different or a Wolf Blitzer to tell you something different. If you have taken the blinders off and actually done your own research, okay, your own interviews, if you will, and talk to people, you will realize that what Colin Kaepernick is, is, is said is 100% true. And it's not the first time. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, I, I heard some people trying to put him in the same, uh, the same rung. No, but Muhammad Ali did the same thing. The two brothers in, I want to say the 1968 Olympics with the, with the black fist, fist up. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jim Brown, you know, on and on and on. Jackie Robinson in his autobiography before he died is not the first time you know now you have NBA players Carmelo Anthony 
LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Paul. You have pretty much all of the WNBA actually standing up and like, you know, enough is enough. Enough is enough. But the fact of the matter is for people to be this angry. And I'm not even going to bring in skin color. I'm not going to bring up his race. I mean, you know, we all know what the deal is. And other people have covered it very articulately. I'm just saying people, some people, have have basically not listened to nothing he said and already mad because he dared to say something disparagingly about the country and this flag. So, you know, you have Donald Trump talking about, well, maybe he should find another country that better suits him. That's ignorant. Maybe we should all together make this country live up to its creed. Make this country live up to those words that we put over our hands. You think about it now. I never knew. I, I'm always the first person to sit up there and say that I, if I don't know. I had no idea, A, that Star Spangled Man banner was written by a slave owner. No racist bait. Never knew that. I never knew that there was a slave clause. Not clause, but there was a slave verse in the original Star Spangled Banner. I never knew that either. These are things that you know. So now that Colin Kaepernick has brought it up, he had he has brought it to the forefront. He has put a light and shined the light on it. So now people are now discussing things and learning things. So then you ask yourself, okay, well, why didn't I know this when they was teaching us the Star Spangled Banner when we was in grammar school? How did you know that? You know? <clears throat> then you just keep going with, with, with the disappointment. You have people that are questioning his patriotism. I'm going to get to the veteran thing, you know, because a lot of my buddies who were veterans with me and some of them, well, actually they all they all got out now. I mean, shoot, I've been out of the military 23 years. So yeah, so everybody that was in pretty much is out. I think I got like one or two buddies that are still in that I have lost track of or lost, con lost contact of, of, of contact with. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute, but we're gonna talk about the patriotism. And you have people who question his patriotism. My comeback to that is, okay, because he wouldn't stand, because I saw a tweet, and I'm going to try to find it and put it in so you can actually see it, it'll be right here, if I can find it, I'll put it up there, and it showed the National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance being said, spoken, you know, played in Congress. And they had a big picture of a lot of congressmen and women were standing up with their hands over their heart. But guess what? There were many, not one, not two, not three, not four. There were many that were just sitting on their butt doing their own thing when it was playing while everybody else was standing up covering over their heart. It's just it is just the height of hypocrisy. It is just the height of hip hip hypocrisy. It's just ridiculous. It really is. We have to do better. We are better as a, a as a nation, as a people. When we open our dang on eyes and stop choosing sides, if you will, and stop be taking things personal and look at it all. Do I think that the congressmen and women who were sitting down during the national anthem should be put on blast, should be ridiculed, should have their jackets burned. No, it's their prerogative. They don't want to stand, they don't want to stand. It's, it's a free country. That's the thing. It is a free country. Now, if Colin Kaepernick had to say something, you know, all white people, this, that, and the third, and this is their fault. I mean, just rambling on and on and on and on and on. I got a problem with that. I do. I have a problem with that. When you clump something all on, I have a problem with that. 
But he didn't say that. He didn't say that. He just basically went into police brutality and stuff. And we're gonna we're gonna cover that a little bit a little bit later also. But not only his patriotism, and not only that when I when I gave that example of the congressman, you have people who wear post promote pridefully, I might add, the Confederate flag. Not the Stars and Stripes and the Confederate flag. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Confederate flag. Nobody wants. I've, I've heard. Okay, because I, I don't know everybody. I didn't watch every interview. I didn't watch every television show. So I can't say with absolute. All I can say is I've never heard it. I've never heard anybody question their patriotism. We're not even going to go with the fact that if you read the doctrine of the gentleman who developed the Confederate flag said that this was to promote and to sustain slavery. We're not even going to go with that. Okay? We're going to go with something that we all can agree on with that flag whether you want to say heritage or not were for traitors period a lot of people forget maybe don't even know the confederates the south fired the first shots of the civil war when they attacked the fort i want to say in virginia i want to say in the bay of virginia i want to say you know again forgive me if i'm wrong let me know on the bottom in the comment in the comment section if I am. I don't think so. But they fired the first shots. They committed treason to this company. So excuse me, company. To this country. And then lost. And had Abraham Lincoln, according to his documents, God rest his soul, would have let would have lived. The South would have almost been no more because of the reparations that they were willing to give to the slaves and the North take their, the former slaves, I'm sorry, and what the North was gonna take, the South would have been drastically different. But then Lincoln gets assassinated, his vice president becomes, pre becomes president, who himself, I wanna say John Adams, I wanna say, <clears throat> might be wrong, I don't know. Um, was a, a starch racist and basically just gave the South back everything that they had. So the South suffered other than the death, other than the death within the war, the South su suffered nothing. They got basically back everything that they wanted to. And every everything that they that they had prior to, except for slaves. Okay? They didn't have slavery, but then you had Jim Crow, you had other um, laws and stuff like that that would keep you inundated a little bit above a slave a little bit a little bit above a slave so that's just like and I know uh, some people are going to be pissed off but that's just like somebody saying in Israel somebody putting up swastika flags okay and saying this is my heritage this 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 is my heritage you know my dad yeah my dad my mom was was nazis but they were bakers they didn't they didn't do anything with the concentration camps and stuff like that but nobody questioned what well, i mean, before i even get it people will go nuts people will go nuts but it is what it is this is a free country if you want to put the, the confederate flag up that's that's totally up to you it's a free country i just choose not to be around you you know when i see it i know i'm rolling you know i know this is not somebody that i really want to sit down and have a have a long talk with because you know to me that's that symbol i have facts i have receipts backed up with that set with that symbol most of the time when you talk to people who promote that and they have that they are going by what their parents grandparents great grandparents has told them I'm talking receipts. I'm talking history. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent, but I'm just trying to bring the analogies up. 
Nobody that I've heard question these gentlemen and ladies. Patriotism. They're saying, oh, well, this is just Southern heritage. But when Colin Kaepernick decides not to stand up for an anthem, didn't bring attention to himself, somebody came to him when they realized that he was sitting down during the anthem. And then he lays out why he does it and every point he made was factually correct. And you may. Are you mad? That's that's just what I understand. If he was lying, that's one thing. You know, if he was disrespectful, calling you, calling you, saying it was your fault, your fault, your fault. No, no, no. The man said, hey, you know, this was police brutality going on in this country. You know, cops are getting basically paid leave, not getting indicted for killing people. I mean, you, you, you. I'll say this. I'll say this. I've been all over the world. I read all the time. Um, I don't know a country. Now, again, nobody really knows. I, I'll put a caveat. Nobody really knows what goes on in Russia and China. North Korea, that type of stuff, because, you know, every time you turn around, South Korea is saying North Korea is killing their own people, you know, somebody in the cabinet. So, you really don't know what's going on in there, but I am just amazed that we have fallen into, and maybe we've always been this way, maybe I'm just naive, because I, I, I tell people, quick, you know, I just got woke not too long ago, you know what I'm saying, I mean, uh, I had my blinders on for a long time so maybe we was always like this but we have gotten to the got to the point that the taking of life is normal and i'm not talking about just just from us to police don't just period it's just normal you know you know every day almost every day you get up and you watch a news that somebody got murdered somebody got murdered somebody got kidnapped some you know we just we just numb to it we're numb to it and then people who are employed and represent the state do, you know, take people's lives. You know, it's it's just it's just wild. It it, it really is. It, it, it it's just it's just it's stunning to me. Now do I believe, am I stupid enough to sit up here and say that everybody who's gotten killed by the police didn't need to be killed? That'd be asinine. That'd be just as asinine as people saying that everybody who was killed by the police needed to be killed. That's ridiculous. That's that's just factually incorrect. Some people put you in that particular position where you have to take their lives. But one trainer always used to tell me when I was a young cop, a young officer on the street, it's like, in any encounter that you end, from a traffic stop to a citizen encounter to a fight to a robbery, you know, so on and so forth, there will always be at least one gun there. And that's the one that you bring. There will always be at least one gun there, and that's the gun that we wear, that we bring. So therefore, it is our responsibility to dis de escalate positions, situations, scenarios, and talk and talk and talk until you're blue in the face, unless this particular person, man, woman, or beast, when you, when you can see that this person is about to kill you, that's how, that's how I was trained, I can't talk about anybody else you know, from L.A. to New York, from Boston to, to, to New Mexico. I can't talk about any of them and, and how they were trained. I know me and everybody from my academy class was taught this way. You don't pull that trigger unless you see that person has a gun. That gun is coming towards you or somebody else. 
or like I said before, when we was talking about police, when I was talking about somebody, you know, I hope that you guys and gals went out there and, and YouTube those videos, like I told you, to, you know, for knife throwing, to see how quick people can unholster a, a knife and kill you, and you 21 feet away. So I'm not saying that cops should, should walk around and not pull the trigger and not pull their gun and and so I'm not saying that at all. I'm really not. But if you're confident, and this is just me, you know, some people say, hey, I'm a bigger guy. Some people say, you know, I was born and raised in New York and stuff like that. But everybody who knows me, I was a straight square, a straight square when I was growing up, you know. I'm just very confident. I'm confident that I can use my brain and my mouth to talk down an escalating scenario. Now, has it worked all the time? No. Sometimes you got to put hands on. But I will tell you the majority of time, the majority of time, I can talk a person and turn around and put the hand behind their, behind their back, even if they don't want to. Okay. So, we're talking about just training and stuff like that. And the veteran stuff. And like I was talking about the veteran stuff. I'm a veteran. You know, I, I said it before. I'm a veteran. That stuff like that don't bother me. It doesn't. And I don't know anybody that has come up to me. Now, I might know people who feel that that is a slap in the face. Okay? But nobody has come to me and said... I'm a veteran and I feel, I feel that's the top of my face. I'm so glad that former and current veterans have made the, ha the hashtag veterans for cop, for Kaepernick. I think that's what it's, yeah, veterans for Kaepernick. Because people are not getting caught up in that. You know, don't get me wrong. When I see the Stars and Stripes. Uh, we just got back, I, I said it in the beginning of the video, we got back from Colorado Springs. One of the tours that we took was the Air Force Academy. Well, anybody who knows me knows that I was stationed in Colorado, not Colorado Springs. I was I'm in Colorado. In Denver, not Colorado Springs, which is an hour away. And I was stationed there. So it was very, it was, it was kind of a homecoming. I haven't been on a military installation and, you know, well, no, I can't say that because when my daughter was in the Army, we was on the military installations, not on a regular basis, but it's been within the last three, four years. But an Air Force installation, it's been a while. It's been a while. So I was nostalgic. I was choked up, you know, when it was five o'clock and they start, they played Reveille. Um, you know, I, I was, I was proud, stuck my chest out and stuff like that. But if somebody doesn't want to stand or they want to sit they want to cover their heart so what who cares you know really who cares you what are you doing what I'm saying is this here what are you doing to me personally because you don't stand up because if that's the case then what do you do like in Rio we just had the Olympics when there were people that were talking during the Russian anthem during the American anthem. Now everybody, when they played the Brazilian anthem, because it was in Brazil, you know, everybody was showing their proper respects and stuff like that. But when you was panning around, there was still people, you know, talking on their phones, stuff like that. You know, I mean, it is what it is. If that is what you hang your hand, your head up, your hat on, and your anger on, then you, then that's a you problem. It's coming from a veteran. I don't care. I really don't. It doesn't bother me. I don't take it personal. You do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. That's how it is. Okay? Period. I, it's, it's so funny when you talk about people not standing for the, for the, uh, for the flag for the National Anthem. When we were young airmen, you used to be walking. When we were young airmen, you didn't have a car or anything like that. So what you would do is, okay, we're going to leave the racks, the barracks, and we're going to go to the mess hall, right? Especially midnight, midnight man, midnight mess was just awesome. I mean, we had all sorts. Anyway, I'm gonna, you know. <laughs> so we would go, and um, you're trying to get to dinner, 
then Beverly starts playing. You look around and you got eight, nine airmen, marines, soldiers, whatever, running to get into a building so they didn't have to stand at attention and salute the flag. It happens. You know, now a lot of times, depending on what base you was in, if you got a colonel or, or a butter bar, where well, that's the second lieutenant who just got out of uh, Officer Candidate School, they'll actually come into the building, catch you, and make you get back outside and stand at attention. I, I, think I, I think that's happened to me like once or twice. So things happen, you know, so if we can do it, you know, and we want to do it, then he could be able to do it. This is a free country. People seem to don't seem to really realize that, you know, it's like, yeah, it's free until you piss me off or until you do something that I don't particularly like. You know what I'm saying? So I think people need to listen to the words formulate your own opinion through your own research. That's all it is. That's all That's all you need to do. That's a, In life, that is all you need to do is make your own decision that's based on facts that you've researched yourself. Now, yeah, you can run those facts past somebody which you feel is more uh, intelligent you know, more well versed and stuff like that. But you got to do you got to do the, the, the heavy work yourself. You know, you have lazy people who will listen to people who they figure, hey, well they're not gonna lie to me. They're a newscaster. They're supposed to tell the truth. No, they tell the truth according to them or whatever particular doctrine their boss, their newspaper, their T V radio station, whatever that is they co-sign on that type of stuff so you need to quit that type of stuff you really do and I just feel that we have sort of lost it you know we really have we, we sort of lost our way to the fact that we don't even listen to what they say or we pick and choose what we want to hear blot out the rest of the stuff and now we are when we outrage as far as, like, I was looking on Facebook and, and uh, Twitter, and there was a lot of posts where officers are, are pissed off, other, other law enforcement officers are pissed off at, at Kaepernick about his police brutality um, claim. And they're pissed off because they say, well, he generalizing cops. I don't think that's what he said, you know, and I know that's not what he meant because he, you know, he put it out through other media channels exactly how he feels. What I tell people, other officers, and I talk to officers, I'm still an officer for the next 19 days, um, but not only them, but I'm in constant contact with officers all over this nation because of my business the fact that I'm still lawful and, and we talk and, and, and we talk about a whole myriad of things but what I tell them is you know one of our biggest problems is is that A we take things too personal and B we're always quick to circle the wagons and adopt the us against them mentality we fail to remember that we judge people every day on their actions. Somebody's speaking, pull, you pull them over. Somebody's having an argument, you try to break it up. Somebody looks at you funny, you know, in a suspicious manner, you might see if you do a citizen's account. We make judgments all the time, so why can't the public make judgments? The public's are the ones that are doing it. Well, you have to think about this. And, and, and this is what I try to explain to, you know, a lot of my colleagues. You did a traffic stop on somebody. Right? You have no idea if somebody else just did a traffic stop on that particular person. Or last week that person got a whole bunch of tickets. Or last month that person got pulled over and was late and got fired from the job. 
or last year they were stopped and again I'm not blaming any of this on the police I'm just saying you know when I take classes and are taught by other law enforcement officers told by veterans that have a lot more time on than me is you never know what that person has just gone through when, when we come in contact with them so if I was pulled over and got tickets and then because of the length of the stop, I lost my job. I didn't get a job because I missed the interview. Now I got to pay for these tickets. I can't afford the tickets because I lost my job or I didn't get the job because I missed the interview. Now my license gets suspended. Whoopie woo. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. We don't know that. But we need to think about that. Okay, this person might be. You know, I've I've done traffic stop with somebody. What you stop me for? Or just mad? I mean, calm down. Is everything okay? Well, no, it's not okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but this is why I pulled you over. Boom, 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 boom. And then depending on how the stop goes, a lot of times I'll just give a verbal warning and I keep moving because I understand that $140, sometimes $275 is a lot of money. I don't want to spend that. But I understand that I'm a different bird. But what I am realizing is there's a lot of birds in my flock. There's a lot of birds in my flock that feel the same way. You know, they just feel the same way. They just don't try to take it personal. And I know a lot of my buddies and colleagues say, well, Rich, you know, hey, I'm human too. You know, somebody trying to cuss me out. They try made me run. They trying to break away. They spit in my face, whatever, whatever, whatever. I understand that. I understand that completely. Shoot, I've lost my lost my, my temper, you know, in an encounter. But it's always through here. It's never through here. It's just not. It's just not. I understand that I have a responsibility when I put their badge on. That's just me. I don't expect anybody to walk in my walk in my shoes the way I do, but that's just me. That's just how I feel. I try not to take it personal. Remember, I think it was like maybe five or six shows ago when we was talking about the Klan and we're saying that when they came to the Orange County Courthouse, I was on the goon squad on the front line to protect them. While they calling me all sorts of n words and uh, not me, but that's what they were saying over 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 the loudspeaker. But they pretty much talk about me too. And then when I looked to my left, I looked to my right. The vast majority of people that was was guarding them looked like me. But we understood that was a job that we had to do. Period. So that's the job that you have to do. But I asked my colleagues, and I'm going to ask anybody who's watching this, who feels that uh, Mr. Ka Kaepernick um, clumped all us in and shouldn't have did that because the majority of us are great cops and good cops and caring cops which is which is true which is very much true very much true but what I'll ask you is this and I know what the answer is, but I ask you, how many, if you, if you sitting down now, either watching me or listening to the sound of my voice, how many cops off rip, off the top of your head, can you sit up here and say, should not be the police? I'm being perfectly honest, because I know I think I stopped counting about 20 that I know of. And I'm talking about for all types, types of things, yeah, they could be a bigger than racist, but I'm talking about scary you know, cowardly, unprepared, unable, you know, either physically or mentally. There's plenty of them. We know it. We know them. The same people that I saw on Facebook, ex I mean, just slaughtering Kaepernick. I've had conversations with them when they be like, what is this person? doing on the force or if this person was given my back I'll ask for another back or I will cancel my back 
So if we can say that, then why can't the public say that? And then let's go a little bit farther because I'm about to I'm about to bring it home because it's almost my time is almost up. We know cops have brutalized people. We know that. We're not stupid. Which is not. Naive maybe. And eh, well you don't know what happened. Somebody said this was so funny. And it's sort of a little tangent, but this this was sort of funny and it's striking me. I was watching the video of another show. And the host has said, you know what's funny is if you're a civilian and it wasn't a black or white thing, it was just civilian and police. I think, you know, actually I know exactly, it was on The View and it was D.L. Hughley. And that's the only reason I watched The View, I don't watch it. But he said what's, what's caught him and what's funny to him is... If a civilian does something or or is in, excuse me or is accused of doing something, right? The prosecutor and it's on his own video. It was videotaped. The prosecutor will take the videotape and say, "Hey, everything you want to know is right on this tape. This man, this woman is guilty. It was caught on tape. This is all you need to see." But if a cop does something that may or may not be wrong, or let's just say that, that that people are saying is wrong, and it's captured on video, what's the first thing they say? Oh, well, you don't know what happened before the video started. You don't know. You it's no it's no uh, audio. You don't know what context it was put in. You see, that's a double standard. I know some people are going to be like, nah, Rich, that's apples and oranges. I, I, I had to throw the bullcrap flag. I really have to. It's a double standard. And if you want to have a double standard, and this is coming from a police officer, if you want to have a double standard, standard, we should be held to a much higher standard. Period. We really should be. We really should be. You know, I, I know it was the last show when you were saying that when you are in a a jury trial, you're supposed to be um, ju- uh, tri- uh, excuse me. You're supposed to be judged by your peers. Well, how do you have peers and they've never been in the police position? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I don't understand that. I, I really don't. I'm not saying that cops should judge cops. And it's be, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if you ask yourself that, are you really our peers? Are we really normal? You know what I'm saying? It's like, what what would a normal person do? Well, a normal person wouldn't run into a burning building. You know, unless it was somebody that you knew. And yes, there are people, you know, the bell curve, there is 10% of people who will run into a burning building for a dog that they don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not making light of that. But I'm just saying, generalize. And we generalize speaking, you know? So I don't know what that is. But anyway, we get back to cops. We know that there are some cops in this nation that have brutalized people based on their race, their religion, sexual orientation, financial status, you know, all of that type of stuff. So why are you mad when somebody brings it up? If you didn't do it, like me, I don't take it personal. Not when somebody says that. I just don't. Like me and my boy was talking and I can see that he takes it personal. Uh, I can put him on blast. But I can see he takes it personal. I don't take it personal because I know the person's not talking to me. That person's not talking about me. I am not that type of person. I'm not a type of officer. You know, how do I know I'm not that type of, pro- t- type of officer? I cannot tell you how many people that I've had to arrest that have seen me years years later and has either come up and thank me come up and talk to me hey officer B I appreciate you not you know treat me like trash and stuff or, or showing out or putting handcuffs on me in front of my kids you know I've joined the church you know I did my time I'm you know I'm in school this type of stuff these are things that are happening to you that lets you understand that you're not that type of police officer. 
okay? So that's what I'm talking about as far as I'm concerned. So if that's how you are, and the majority of people that I see taking it per personal and have, oh, how dare you generalize everybody and this, that, and the third, are, are good cops, cops that I have worked with, cops that I will put my life on the line for. They are good cops. They just blinded to the fact of this. How dare you question us? I think we should be the ones that should be questioned the most. Period. I mean, and, 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 and I'm talking about me. Do I like being questioned? Hell no, I don't like being questioned. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I understand. Now, again, there is a limit to my patience. You know, you get to ask me as many questions as you want to as long as they're different questions. Or, for some reason, you don't understand a particular answer I gave you. I don't mind elaborating or speaking further. But we're not going to have a debate about the stuff. I'm like, look, I'm telling you what the law says. I'm telling you why the stop was this, that, and the third. You know, you asking me the same question in 50 different ways. It's not going to get a different answer. It's going to be the same answer. And that's why I'm like, okay, you know, sir, ma'am, you know, you have a good day. If you want to contest the ticket, and I keep saying that, everybody know me, I don't write tickets. But I'm just saying, if you want to contest the ticket or you want to contest the arrest or the warrant or whatever, you know, be my guest. You know, I'll be in court. They'll call me in court and then we'll just go ahead and figure it out that way. You know, because I'm not going to sit there and argue with you. You know what I'm saying? The fact of the matter, this is what the deal is. Whoop de whoop. Now, I will be the first to admit that I don't know everything. There was this one crash where I just knew that the one person was at fault. And when I explained everything to this gentleman, I went back to my patrol car. I'm filling out the paperwork. He came to me he's like, sir, can I, can I talk to you? One second, I stepped out of my car. I went over and spoke and he showed me the statue and showed me that I was wrong. Hey, sir, I appreciate it. I stand corrected and you and you move on you move on you don't take things things personal so all I say is if the shoe don't fit don't worry about it period now if somebody says something well officer B did this that and the third and you know you didn't do it now you got it now you got a right to be sold but if somebody's using a general general a generalizing terms in general terms about police brutality and the fact that it's not all cops, but they are cops. Why are you mad? Because it's true. It's true. I'm not even going to go with Darren Wilson. I, I wasn't there. But Pentalio, I think that's what his name is. The one that choked out Eric Garner. He should lose his job. He should lose his job. You contributed to killing the man. Using an illegal chokehold. Dude, you should know better. You should know better. You know, I mean, so when you look at stuff like that, you're like, well, I know what I saw. Um, that should at least went to trial. And remember, I, you notice I didn't say that he should have went to jail. I believe he should have went. There should have been a trial. And and the prosecutor should have visited vigorously went after a charge of whatever they decided to charge him with. But, you know, what the jury speaks, the jury speaks. You know, unfortunately, sometimes you get hung juries and you get people who just think that we can do no wrong. And those are usually the people who has never had anything wrong done to them. You know, so do I think when they say 90, 95, you know, percent of officers are good officers. They came into the profession to help people. I believe that. I really do. I, but I also believe that things change throughout your career. Sometimes good, sometimes for the bad. But I do finally agree that there are people who wear the same badge as I do should have never been cops 
you know, they're, they're sexist, they're racist, they're bigots, they're homophobes, they're incompetent, they're cowards, you know, I mean, and keep going on and on and on with the superlatives. I, I know this. So when somebody says that we need to stop police brutality, that's exactly what they should do. That's what we all should be doing. We should all be doing. I mean, shoot, there was, when I was in Colorado Springs, somebody sent me, I want to say it's from Oklahoma, but they sent me a clip, a news clip. And when I watched the clip, uh, this male, uh, they said that he had ran through a stop sign. They tried to light him up. He ran or drove. You don't drove him. He ran for the police. Ran up into his house or, or, or drove up into the driveway, jumped out, went into the house. I don't know what the laws are in Oklahoma, but I know I can't do that. Okay, I can't just arbitrarily kick in the door. Now, yeah, you hold what you got, you get a warrant, and then depending if if the judge feels that you know you articulated enough to warrant a warrant, then you'll know. But as far as just kicking in, and again, I don't know if they got a warrant. But anyway, they kicked in the door. He was standing in the living room. They were telling him to come up. He had his hands up. He was walking to the side. Now, I saw four cops. That's just him. But you say, okay, we don't know what he has in the house. Okay, cool. Okay, cool, cool. He's walking to the side. So let's just say that I'm where, or I'm where they would be. So what are you looking? Like in front of me, he's like here and he's moving this way, but he has his hands up. They tase him. Would I have tased him? No. But okay. Because the fact of the matter is, if you say I didn't want to go in because because I didn't know what was around the bend, I didn't know who else would drop drop out, jump out and stuff like that. Well you taste him, which drops him to the floor, you still got to go in and get him. So why not take the time to make sure you surround the house and make him walk to the door where you ain't gotta tase him at all. And if you have to go in, you go in hands on, take him down to the ground, you put the handcuffs on, that's cool. But I'm not even talking about that. I ain't talking about that. He runs into his, I want to say it's his grandmama house because she's 84, right? I don't know if he told her anything or whatever. But when, when they tased him, they were jumping in, she comes around the corner. She's like, hey, what the heck is going on? You know, you got my grandson on the ground. You know, we don't know what's going on. Well, they telling her. Uh, the female officers telling her to go back, you know, stay away, whatever. Then they say, if you don't go back, I'm going to spray you. It took them 40 seconds between coming in the front door to spraying this 82-year-old woman. Let me tell you something. This is just my opinion. I'm not shooting an 84-year-old nothing. I'm not tasing an 84 year old, nothing. I'm not slamming an 82 year old, nothing to the ground unless they are coming after me in this deadly force situation. Then I got to do what I got to do. What is that 84 year old person going to do to you? If you look at the, the cams that they had on, you can see that she was unarmed what is, and she was like maybe 90 something odd pounds. What was she going to do to you? Now, you got four of them. I, I saw like, I want to say it was either one female and three guys, or maybe it was two females and three guys, because the guys were affecting the arrest of the gentleman, of the dude, okay? And the female that's in question was actually basically playing a a, a, a a Romer type role. You know, basically while they're down trying to affect the arrest, you need your eyes up to make sure that you don't have any other threats. So if you talk to her like you got some dang on sense, hey look ma'am, I understand what's going on. Give us a minute. We're trying to affect the rest. I'll explain everything to you. Please, just just, just hang tight. 
Now, some people might say, well, Rich, did you hear everything they said? No, no, I sure did. Because the police report, not the police report, the news report didn't have that. All of it in there. They should have. Because they said that it took 40 seconds. So how much explaining you could do in four in 40 seconds? That's just a bad look. And I know this was off the beaten path a little bit, but it goes toward the, the, the police brutality. We got to do better. We can do better. We come to a situation with many people. Many people. You know, um, they had, um, I saw something today. Somebody sent me something about, um, I, I, I had to do some more research on it, but it was basically these, these police officers was coming to this young man's house to effect a, a warrant, to effect an arrest, and it was going to issue a, you know, or serve the warrant. He jumps out of the window, takes off running. Three cops chase him. They, they get into a confrontation. He allegedly grabbed somebody's gun or grabbed for somebody's gun and then shots rang out. Well, you got to think about this. Let's, let's, let's just break it down. And, and again, I'm not saying that the police officers were lying and everything like that. The investigation will, will come up. But you have to sometimes just ask yourself, okay, there's three of y'all, there's one of them. Who amongst y'all Hat, don't have their gun unsecured, first of all. And then, if all three of y'all are fighting with this person, what was the other person doing that they could see that this person was grabbing a gun to shoot multiple times and not hit any of the police officers? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to think about that type of stuff. You know, there's three of us. We use proper tactics. Your gun should never get taken. Period. You use the proper tactics. You know, you put yourself in a position, yeah, chase them. Yeah, if you got a warrant, somebody jump somebody jumps out of a car, somebody jumps out of a house, somebody jumps out of a bus. If you know you got a warrant on that person and you feel like chasing them, you figure that you got the physical abilities to chase this person down and you chase them. I have no issue with that. But then how do you get to the point where it's three of y'all against that particular person and that person wind up getting shot and killed? I just don't understand it. I really don't. I just really don't. As many fights as I've gotten to, I'm talking about not down, drag out fights. I'm talking about fights where we had to wade into the middle of a riot. Not once did I feel the urge to pull my gun and end somebody's life. Now, like I said, I'm a different bird, but I, like I said before, I'm meeting and learning of a lot of the same birds. We in the same flock, we just in different areas. So when people want to question that type of stuff and they want to question the training, they want to question the attitude, don't take it personal if they're not talking about you. You mad because they talk about you. That's how it should be. Okay, I'm mad this person has put me on black. But if I know I didn't do anything, if I know I'm the type of cop that needs needs to feel that I have done a, a, a the proper job and upholded the law to my best of my ability as well as upholding other people's civil rights and protect them from undue search and seizure then I did my job so you know it's just, just a little bit and I know I, I went I went a little bit over an hour and um I went on a little tangent towards the end and stuff. I just wanted to get that out and and, and and be like, hey, you know, we need to we need to stop acting like it's us against the world and really just open and embrace and listen to people. I'm not talking about sit up there and allow people to talk trash to you and yell and scream and disrespect you and stuff like that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm I'm not saying you you are the state. You should we are paid to uphold law. But we also given a lot of a lot of leeway that we could just basically talk to somebody and get it situated and get the um, the situation handled in the proper way 
and nobody loses their, lose their life. That's just me. So, I appreciate your time. I really do. Sorry for the lateness. This won't go up till Thursday. I know, I know, I know. I'll get it together. But in the meantime, in between time, stay blessed, stay informed, stay safe. Peace, and I'm gone.